Hello Zero K fans and welcome back to the 20th, well the one day 2v2 tournament. Unfortunately I did miss the first few minutes of Anakin and Sponge vs. Monkmaster and Magman, but thankfully Zero K is the sort of game where you can actually rejoin in progress. So before I get to it, I'm just going to point out that this is a match, this is Group C, this is a match that happened after the Sponge and Anakin won their first games. And they will be fighting the winner of Saab versus... Well, Saab and Yurga, sorry, they're fighting Saab and Yurga, who won in the last series. So let's get to the game itself. So, just going through what happened, so... Magman is going for light vehicles, Mothmaster for air, Mothmaster going heavy for bombers, and... has... well, managed to get rid of the Sponge's commanders. The Sponge has lost his commander, two bombers, despite the Razor's kiss here, and... Magman... Moving in pretty heavily to the center, at the same time Anarchid and the Sponge. Anarchid going for light vehicles, the Sponge going for heavy tanks. We saw a Titan duel last game as well. Or sorry, last series as well. That was game. This is game one, by the way. Anyway, Mothmaster coming in with more bombers, trying to get rid of these Panthers. And, excuse me. Not a bad way to go with it. Panthers are definitely going to have a harder time dealing with a bunch of Shadows than they are dealing with a bunch of ground units. And at this point, Magman can deal with the last Panther with the Scorchers. So, Anarchid and the Sponge are really falling behind now. Mothmaster and Magman, massive military advantage. Pretty big economic advantage. And now, Team 1 surrenders, which kind of makes me sad that I missed this start. Anyway, that's Game 1. Sorry, I was kind of short. But, Game 2 will be starting pretty short, shortly. I mean, you kind of see what happened here. So, sheesh. Wow, that's quite the upset, actually, because Anarchid and the Sponge are definitely stronger players. So, I'll be back in just a moment once Game 2 actually starts proper. And stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Zero K fans. It's game two of Anarchy the Sponge and Mothmaster Magman in the one day 2v2 tournament for Zero K. Just gonna go over this once again. So, we do have like, Anarchy and the Sponge did win their first match, now against Mothmaster and Magman. Mothmaster and Magman won game one, though unfortunately I only caught it like a minute before it ended. But. Yes, they won basically by outproducing an economy and getting rid of commanders quickly with bombs. And now in game two on Comic Catcher Redux, which is not well, Comic Catcher Redux version two, which is different from the original, though admittedly still a fairly flat and pitted map. Looks a bit more detailed though. It looks like it looks nicer than the original, that's for sure. It looks quite pretty. If I actually go into the map and were to point it out, so yeah, it it's pretty. And it's nice, well, it's the same skybox as Apophis, which is another pretty map. And the skybox I love. But anyway, yeah, so this is a large map. Not a, it doesn't look like it's a bad team map. I mean, it's definitely a popular one, or at least Comic Catcher was a popular one. So this, or Comic Catcher Redux original is popular one. We saw that in the 1v1 tournament as well, and that lasted half an hour. But... Now let's have an hour with three factories and 50 metal on both sides. Now 2v2 is going to be a bit different because it is in some ways faster as a game. Since we see there are a lot of times where the players can just... I mean, you get more economy and you get more production quickly. But at the same time, you also have to deal with the fact that that much economy and production can bear down on a single front and just break it open easily. But still, it's probably take a little while of a game. Not very likely to be a very rush-based game. And I... What the heck? Why is it saying I'm catching up? That's weird. Anyway, Magman going for light vehicles and Mothmaster going for cloaky bots, while the Sponge goes for light vehicles and Anarchid goes for air. Not terribly surprising on this map that he'd go for air early on. But, at the same time, we. Well, we do see that there's enough room that's probably going to be able to work out. Though, admittedly, that does put a lot of pressure on the sponge. He's going to have to take the ground, he's going to have to hold the ground against Cloaky and Light Vehicle. Especially since Anarchid's going very quickly for air, he's expecting that one of Mothmaster or Magman is going to go for an air start, and he is wrong. Neither of them are going for an air start. They are instead going for pure land. And, in fact, going for a decent amount of anti-air as well. It looks like now they know about the air they can easily deal with if they want to. Easily build up Jethro's or Flails. They aren't doing that at the moment, but they probably will eventually. And Anarchid getting up some shadows. It looks like he's going to try to basically get revenge for what happened last game. Try to get rid of Magman and Mothmaster's commanders. 
point out that Magman's Commander Shotgun Esel Mothmaster is unmorphed. He's focusing entirely on power plants for his power generation needs. He is not focusing on energy cell. While well, Anarchid and the Sponge... Let's see, Anarchid, Light Particle Beam E-Cell, and the Sponge has pure E-Cell. And Sponge also trying to do what he can to get rid of a dart, but... Sorry, Anarchid get, trying to get rid of a dart. Anarchid being the air player here. And, what the? Oh, someone just left a mark there. But Anarchid is... Like I said, he's in the air and he has to... I mean, the thing is, the Sponge has to deal with everything that's on the ground now. It's kind of difficult to work with, and it looks like... Well... Looks like Anarchid is going to be able to stay alive for now. It's just, this is kind of risky, even given that they did lose game one. I do think Anarchid is going to try to just mass bombers and, like I said, go for a comm snipe. Just try to cripple their energy economy. That would be very powerful, especially against Magman. Mothmaster would be a waste, but Magman, it'd be extremely powerful to do. Mothmaster, however, is getting Jethro's. He is prepared for this. Make sure that he has what he needs to stay in the game with this one while... Also making sure that he knows... I mean, Magman knows it's coming up. I mean, both Mothmaster and Magman do have enough... Sorry, this wrong players. They do have enough vision of this. They don't have... Well, they did. Unfortunately for them, Anakin managed to get rid of that one dart, so they do not know what's going on at the moment. However, also unfortunately, this... Well, the command... I think they don't know where the commanders are. I don't think Anarchy is actually aware of where the commanders are. He will soon be the... There he is! Now he knows where the commander is. The sponge has spotted it. In fact, the sponge could go for a dive right now to kill it. And... Sorry, crash enough flail. I was thinking hovercraft. Yeah, the sponge... If he goes in for this, if he goes for this, it's gonna be a kill. And he is going for this. He's diving! The Scorchers are diving, and they are going to be successful in doing so. Magman losing his commander. Magman down to 8 energy. He is now e-stalling. Or just about... Looks like he managed to finish up a Solar Collector right as that happened. But still, he's going to be behind in energy, and the Sponge is... The Sponge and Anakin are now pulling out ahead. And Magman also behind in terms of military. He was focusing pretty heavily on metal. Mothmaster is still doing okay, but Magman, not so much. Mothmaster giving Magman some power plants just to even things out so that Magman isn't going to completely lose out on this. But still, Magman now kind of behind... Certainly has been crippled a bit by that attack. If another good raid comes, actually, come to think of it, the Sponge is playing light vehicles. He could send in, if he does it, he could do the same thing that Saab did, send in a Scorcher around the back. There isn't really anything in the way of defenses. He just send a Scorcher around the back, take care of all these metal extractors. The only downside is how big this map is, and the fact that he probably doesn't know about the metal extractor. However, Scythe's coming in from Mothmaster. He's not even worried about air anymore. He's just going for pure Scythe. Company coming in, probably trying to get rid of... Well, Heavy Tank Factory from Anarchid. That's definitely a nice target. Probably trying to get rid of the Air Factory, though. But still, Heavy Tank Factory is going to be a juicy target. Or pretty much anything comes out of it for the sides. However, at the same time, Dart's able to get rid of a bunch of Metal Extractors from Mothmaster. Very nice harassment by Anarchid and the Sponge. They're taking... I mean, their whole side of the map is completely theirs. While Mothmaster and Magman have barely a quarter of the map. I mean, Anarchid and the Sponge are pulling very much ahead. Despite the upset in game one, it looks like this is going to go... Well, actually, Mothmaster's doing a pretty good job trying to get some revenge, trying to get these sides to do some damage here, but it's probably not going to do everything it needs to. The commander's actually out of position right now. It was, might have been the target of the snipe, ultimately. However, the heavy tank factory is what does go down to that snipe. Bomber coming in to finish off the sides, but really, that did do a pretty good job. The heavy tank factory was nearly done. And the sides basically paid for themselves by killing it. However, they are dead. It is worth noting out that sides are very dead. At the same time, we do have crashes coming into the center of the map, but they are not going to do anything. A leveler, however, is going to be very effective. That is going to basically get rid of the Scorchers without too much issue. But the Crasher is going down beforehand. Actually, no, it is going to have issue because there are too many Scorchers. That leveler, able to finish, or not able to finish off the Scorchers in time, goes down to the Scorchers, and I think... This is going to go in Anarchid and the Sponge's favor. I think it's going to be going on to Game 3 once we're done with this. We'll see, though. But I don't see how Mothmaster and Magman are going to pull out of this. They are basically... They have they stalled hard, and admittedly, they managed to pull out somewhat. But Anakin and the Sponge just took advantage of that and kept going. Admittedly, the Sponge needs more power. He does need more energy. I don't know if he's aware of that. He doesn't seem to be building more energy... 
Nope, he's not building any more power plants. He's building defense structures, he's building mexes, he's building caretakers. He is not building power plants. Anarchid, on the other hand, is pretty much even between the two. And getting his heavy tank factory up correctly this time, and getting power... Okay, Anarchid is getting the power. He is getting power for himself. He is... I don't believe power is shared. I believe metal is, but not power. However, someone could correct me on that. I don't play a huge amount of team games, so I don't recall exactly how the current economy sharing system works. It also changes somewhat frequently. However, Anarchid still taking advantage of the fact that he has air. Despite the fact that there are defenders around the map, he is able to get some decent harassment going. Now, at this point, Mothmaster has not Morphous Commander. Throughout this entire game, he has not Morphous Commander, so it's really not that juicy of a target. Probably for the best, really. I mean, Mothmaster has actually taken the right choice here. He's also going for air... Avoiding Cloak, he's just focusing entirely on air instead. Getting 20 metal into air, and at the same time, heavy tanks are up for Anarchid. I'm not sure if he's going to go for Panthers, he's going to go for something heavier. I mean, probably not a Goliath, but he is going for Reapers. Okay, Reapers and Banishers, not at all surprising. At this stage in the game, why would he go for anything light? Although, admittedly, Panthers are quite good, but still. He's not starting with Heavy Tank, so he's probably not going to focus on Panthers. He's going to focus, well, as you can see, on Reapers. Try to push in and basically tear apart everything Mothmaster has. Try to take the game that way. Now, at the same time, he is losing bombers, he is losing air control as Avengers are over on the southwest side of the map. While, on the other hand, Mothmaster's Avengers are all on the east side. They are not touching each other at this point, and I think that there's actually... There are some airplanes... There's still some planes coming in for Anarchid. He has the metal... He definitely has the energy. He has the metal as well for it. But he is focusing very heavily on getting this Banisher up. Which actually looks like he... Went with, no, he's not bothering with Reapers. Banisher and Pillager and... St or Banisher and Copperhead to get rid of the air units. No, Pure Copperhead! Not even finishing that Banisher! Just going for Pure Copperhead to get rid of the Avengers. Possibly going to go for Reaper afterwards, but not at the moment. And as for the Sponge, focusing still very heavily on light vehicles. A lot of Scorchers getting pushed in the center of the map. And that should work okay. Let's see what... Magman right now, he does have... Fair amount of scorches, but he's actually he is. Well, no, he's spending twenty metal or so on scorchers. How many scorchers does he have? He only has a few. Focusing on scorchers and levelers, not a bad mix. And sight, nice use of sight here by Mothmaster, getting rid of this Mason. And at the same time, though, we do see the Sponge going for a very powerful harassment, getting away from the levelers. That's the one thing with the leveler mix is that it needs to actually get in, it needs to actually trap them. Now, as you can see here, that Scorcher went down no problem, but if the Scorchers aren't in range, it's not going to work, and these Avengers away from the Flag Tank, which is not the where they want to be. Admittedly, the Scorchers can still hit them, but not very hard. That being said, enough Scorchers. The Sponge is able to get rid of Magman's expansion attempts to the west. At the same time, Mothmaster coming in with his own bomber is going to try to snipe the Sponge's command. The Sponge has an energy cell commander, but he has so much energy at the moment, he doesn't even need to worry about that. Not to mention the Avengers coming for defense. And also not to mention that the bombers actually missed. Mothmaster's bombers completely missed. Now, where is that copper? Okay, Panthers are being built. Never mind. Anarchid is going for the Panthers because they are quite powerful. But he's also getting Banishers, getting Reapers as well. And that Copperhead should be around here somewhere. I don't see it, though. Oh, here it is. Copperhead is around here and has done its job getting rid of the Avengers. And the Vamps as well finishing up. So, once again, air control goes to Anarchid. This is... Yes, Burt points up. This is game. This, Yeah, this is definitely game. The Sponge bearing down with two dozen Scorchers and Vamps and everything just dealing with all of Mothmaster's air. Not much they can do about it. Copperhead able to deal with any air that actually gets out of there, so... The Reaper, actually, the Banishing Reaper is going to finish it off if the Scorchers don't. This Copperhead here, that's really what's going to matter and, well, what's going to seal the game. That did it. So Magman trying to deal with the Sponge, Magman and Mothmaster are trying to deal with what the Sponge has, but it's really not enough. They're doing some damage, but there's just too much. The economy advantage is way too high. Anakin and the Sponge have taken their entire half of the map. They have some overdrive, they have a ton of power. I don't know where... Okay, there's a fusion plant coming for the Sponge, but they have everything they need. And Mag Magman and Mothmaster never expanded as much, and Magman lost his commander early on, and that was a blow. So, I mean, good on them for taking the game off of Anakin the Sponge, but that is going to be Game 2. So, Game 3 will be starting pretty shortly. It looks like Mothmaster Magman just about to resign. 
And yes, they are resigning. That is game. We're going to move on to game three. And with that, the deciding game. That's it. Whoever wins that game is going to move on to play against Saab and Yurga. And whoever doesn't is just going to be watching what happens. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back in just a minute or two. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Game 3 of Magman and Mothmaster vs. Anarchid and the Sponge. This is uh, certainly an interesting series. Mathma Magman and Mothmaster won the first game by way of, well, basically, comm sniping. That just did it. And after that, we had Anarchid and the Sponge winning by better use of economy on Comic Catcher Redux 2. But now we're on Frozen Planet, and Frozen Planet is a map that probably favors the way Mothmaster and Magman were playing. But we'll see how it works out. I think Anakin and the Sponge probably have figured out what Mothmaster and Magman like to do, and are probably going to deal with that. However, Frozen Planet is also not a... This is a tiny map. This is a 1v1 map. I'm a bit surprised that it was chosen. But it's going to be... It's going to be a... Interesting match, because just given the size of this map, I'd be surprised if it lasted past five minutes. We'll see, though. Anyway, just get in here while players are setting up. See, like I said, this is a tiny map. I've shown it before. It has not gotten any bigger since the last time I showcased this map. It remains an 8x8 map. It's still only got about two dozen metal spots. Admittedly, I think... Oh, I'm not sure... Oh, I see, there's... Sorry, I was talking... There's some people in the chat pointing out how the metal and energy sharing works and what the settings are. And the... Standard, I don't... Okay, the standard is that metal is shared and energy is not shared except when it comes to overdrive. That is, overdrive grid. Waiting for the sponge to actually set himself up, figure out where he's going to go, and then the match will start. Why is that up? Then the match will start. There we go. The sponge has gotten his position going. Anakin and the sponge... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit surprised that Anakin and the sponge are the only ones doing this. Like, Mothmaster and Magma focusing very heavily on the southeast side of the map, while the sponge and Anarchid are building up right next to their respective metal extractors. Though, I think... Wait, did... Nope, he's in a good spot. Yeah, that... Anakin and the Sponge are basically not going to be stepping on each other's toes, while Mothmaster and Magman are basically are basically in the same area. Mothmaster's going to have to walk around the map in order to get to the metal extractors in order to actually get himself an economy. While Anakin and the Sponge, on the other hand, they are probably going to be fine. I mean, they're, they have three mechs to themselves without basically any walking. That's the big thing. They're not going to have to walk to their mechs. While Mothmaster is going to have to walk to any mechs he goes to, his next max is going to be over here. That I don't know why he didn't just spawn there. I mean, like, I can kind of see in terms of defensibility, though. Jump Jet and Spider. Spider I can see on this map, but Jump Jet, I don't know. And Anarchid, able to come in and just get rid of those fleas. I mean, anything gets rid of fleas, so it's not a surprise. However, Mothmaster is using them pretty well. He does have them set up for vision. He does see what's going on inside the Sponge's base. And the Sponge, apparently suspicious... Finds that flea and gets rid of it. Though, yeah, I'm, that is good. Mothmaster is using fleas the way they should be used, as basically scouts. That's exactly how they should be used. As we can see, Dirtbag coming in from Anarchid. Not a surprising choice for shield bust, just point out Anarchid going shields, Cloaky first the sponge. So Anarchid and the sponge going for much more typical factories, though on this map, like I said, spiders are not surprising. Dirtbag being used for scouting and doing a pretty good job of it, too. Although, admittedly, against Jumpy and Spider, Dirtbag doesn't really do all that much. It blocks off terrain, makes it impassable to everything, but Jumpies jump over everything, and Spiders just climb on everything. So there's really nothing that can be used to stop them. Magman, nice is that... Well, okay use of that Pyro there. Not great use of the Pyro. It's okay use, but it's just... It didn't die. That's what's good. He could probably use a couple more, though, and he is getting some... He is getting more, but the thing is that... Pyros are expensive units. They're 
They are expensive units. One of them actually has gone down. It's death, not completely in vain. One of the glaives dies as well, but that was, what, 220 metal to kill 65 metal worth of unit? Yeah, not the most useful thing, unfortunately. So, there is... Well, there's not a whole lot I can think of that Mothmaster and Magman are going to have on their side at this point. I mean, fleas are weak. Venoms aren't too weak, but still, fleas are. And Racketeer's coming in as well to just stop the Venoms before they even start from the looks of it. Either stop the Venom or stop the Pyro, both are good. But Anakin and the Sponge can easily explore around the map and just take everything they need, while Mothmaster and Magman are both playing factories that, I mean, okay, Ma Mothmaster not so much. Spiders can explore around the map to an extent, but they can't easily take map control. And Jump Jet, the Jump Jet factory has basically no chance of doing that. I mean, their units are very powerful, but very individual. They can't, you can't easily get a large army of them. If you do, it's, it's very powerful, but you can't easily do it. That being said, enough Venoms are in place, getting rid of half of this Glaive army from the Sponge. There's still more Glaives where that came from, but at this point, it's going to come down to Anarchy getting his Racketeer. He does have a Racketeer up just now, finishing that. And Rogues coming in afterwards. What is coming in after? No, Rogues are all these building right now. While the Sponge, on the other hand, what is he building? He is building Glaives and some Rectors. The Sponge is definitely in... Well, he's got the high ground at any rate. He's in a good position for holding this area. Mothmaster is aware of the fact that this is happening to an extent. He does have a flea nearby. He can see it. But at this point, he is still... I mean, okay, the only thing in terms of economy that's working out for Mothmaster and Magman is the sheer fact that there aren't that many metal extractors. Now, Anarchid is morphing right now. The Sponge has already morphed. He has Riot Cannon and E-Cell on a Battle Commander, so it's going to be harder to kill than a Support Commander would be. And... Mothmaster has pure beam laser, no e-cell, not relying at all on his commander for energy, just using it as a turret. Interesting choice, not typical, but definitely in this game, I'm not surprised. And Magman is, oops, Magman is shotgun e-cell. So Magman's commander going down would be powerful loss, but the thing is, he's actually not that far behind there. And Anarchid, heavy machine gun auto repair system, that is... Well, that's not going to help him too much. I mean, he has to, it's also reloading from the looks of it. Is that reload? No, that's jump. That's jump reload, but still, he's EMP'd, and I think his commander his commander's going to go down to the Pyros. Kind of unfortunate, because I would have liked to see Heavy Machine Gun be used, but alas, it was not. That's not good. Anarchid did, I mean, he didn't need it for energy, but still, he was making more of a frontline battle commander, and at this point, trying to deal with that, Trying to deal with that attack, to deal with the loss of the commander, that's going to be tough. But I think, well, it's really going to come down to whether or not he can build more economy. Now, the Sponge and Anarchid are ahead in economy, but only slightly. It's really going to come down to how they raid out Mothmaster and Magman. And probably mostly Mothmaster. Magman has well-defended metal extractors, but Mothmaster, his metal extractors, there's a couple laser turrets, but that's about it. If you get, if those are eliminated, if the Sponge can get rid of those, it's not going to be too hard to get past that. Getting some Zeus's as well to deal with the Pyros. Five Pyros, okay, this is going to be harder to deal with. A few of them are going down. Actually, a lot of them are going down. The Sponge's Commander able to take care of all those Pyros with that Riot Cannon. Nicely done there. It's still in the fires. So it's not good. But able to get rid of the Commanders nonetheless. Which is definitely a good thing to have. At the same time, Anarchid's Rogue's nicely getting rid of... Well, trying to snipe Mag Magman's Commander, but still nicely getting rid of the Defenders that were there. They're just breaking down the static defense that exists, and from then, they'll be able to basically break in and tear apart everything. The Sponge has... How many Zeus's does he have? He has four Zeus's so far. Anarchid is going for thugs. He is going for a thug felon ball. About time to... And getting a gunship plant. Top of that, building that gunship plant, though admittedly that is coming up slowly. It looks like... Yeah, Anarchid's 10 metal is not working out too well. I mean, he's... Yeah, he is focused entirely on building this up. He doesn't have a whole lot of build power being pushed into it either. What the heck? How the... Okay, that's strange. Not sure why... Why is my chat gone weird? Ah. Sorry about that. I don't know why my chat just exploded for whatever reason. But anyway... Or, wait, was that build ETA? No, CTFGY, that's fine. 
Not sure what happened in the chat there. Sorry about that, people. But don't really need it. What I do need is a clear view of the map. Ooh, technical problems happen in this game. Crab coming up. Uh, whoa, okay, that's a big thing to have. Mothmaster coming in with a crab, and he is... Well, he is going to be doing a fair amount with that. I mean, the crab is... Crab is a good utility unit, especially when it has these venoms alongside it. It's most, it's toughest when it's deployed. When it's on the ground and firing, it's pretty much impossible to kill. But when it's moving at all, it becomes a lot less defensible. When it's moving, it basically says it's 4,000 health, but it effectively has 12,000 when it's sitting down. It's not quite like a siege tank because it is able to attack while moving as effectively as it does when stationary, but it's still fairly powerful. And now, now it is in armor mode. Still, even with that, the EMP is able to get through it. And a bunch of Venoms and Fleas trying to finish it off, trying to finish up the Zeus is trying to stop it from killing the crab. No more crabs are forthcoming at the moment. At the same time, Jacks are coming up from Magman, as well as a five pyro set coming to try to deal with this. And that is going to be once pushing back the sponge once again. Sponge doing what he can and actually is dealing quite a bit of damage, killing a few of the pyros. And getting rid of some venoms as well. Looks like the crab has indeed gone down. But the sponge being pushed back, so the sponge winning out, but not perfectly. And at the same time, not a felon ball, a felon and a thug. Focus has entirely been shifted over to Black Dawn construction to basically getting gunships for Anarchid. The sponge, on the other hand, does have a strong presence on the ground. If he repairs these Zeus's, which he could very easily do, he's probably going to do... No, he's no plans to do so at the moment. But if he does so, he's going to have a much easier time getting rid of everything there. I mean, if he gets rid of the Zeus's, or heals up the Zeus's, he could repair... Sorry. Repairs the Zeus's, he could kill this Northeast expansion. He could destroy that completely, and then tear apart the Southwest, because at that point, Mothmaster Magma are completely behind an economy. And the Sponge, not even worrying about healing the Zeus's, just going in instead with Glaives, and those Glaives will be able to tear apart everything. Very easily. And even then, the Felon... Felon Thug is not doing a bad job getting rid of... Well, getting rid of a Solar Collector. Not bad. And there we go, the Glaives coming in to get rid of the Metal Extractors. Not gonna have any issue doing so. I think... Okay, one death, or two deaths, actually. But otherwise, a perfect raid. The Sponge getting rid of Mothmaster's Metal Advantage, and at the same time... We do have Defender coming in for Magman. He is going to be building some forward defenses from the looks of it. Trying to harass as well, trying to make up for that loss. But making up for the loss against Anarchy, who really has the weaker economy of the two. The Sponge is the one who has the strong economy. The Sponge is the one who's basically carrying the economic burden of the blue team. Magman is coming in with his jacks. Like I said, I'm still a bit surprised that jumpers were used. I'm not surprised that... Actually, I'm surprised that jumpers were used and puppies were not, given the changes to them recently, but... I don't think that's in the least it's stable. I think the puppy changes are coming in later. They're made cheaper, but weaker. Anyway, Black Dawn is coming in, and it's... Well, it's going to be used on the commander. It looks like he's going to try to do a comp snipe with the Black Dawn and the Felon. The Felon cannot shoot through mountains. They're not going to help too much, but the Black Dawn, able to deal quite a lot of damage, have the health of that commander. The commander does have... Well, commanders automatically repair no matter what. And it looks like the Zeus's have been repaired up a bit. They are coming in, they are getting rid of Mothmaster's commander. At the same time as Magman's commander is taking a lot of damage. Able to avoid the felon by simply walking around the mountain, but Raxir stopping it from actually attacking anything. And down it goes! Magman loses his commander, Mothmaster's lost his commander, and that is game. Mothmaster and Magman lose. Anarchid and the Sponge are gonna go on to play Yurga and Saab. And that is That is game. That is match. Nicely done. Oops. Nicely done for what the heck? Ah. Sorry about that. Nicely done to Mothmaster and to... Sorry, nicely done... Not to Mothmaster. Nicely done to Anarchid and the Sponge. Sorry, I actually went to desktop mode. I hate when this happens. Nicely done to Anarchid and the Sponge. They will have... Well, definitely dealt enough damage, that's for sure. I mean, that was pretty big. So, Anarchid and the Sponge, they take... They take the game, and I should also point out that, although admittedly hasn't been updated on the brackets yet, I should also point out that Phoenix Prime and Maverick lost to Ivory Iver King and Mistrisium have won both of their matches 2-0. They're going to be up against Banana Eye and Banana King, and Saab and Yurga are going to be against Anarchid and the Sponge. 
that is going to be fairly big, and I suppose I might as well just cast the Yurga Sub Anarchid Sponge game. Yeah, that was... Well, that kind of went as expected, I suppose. I mean, really, you're dealing with the fact that we have... I mean, Anarchid and the Sponge are just better players, so... And they're more experienced, they have, well, higher elo at any rate, so from the looks of it, they are better. But yeah, that... That was a little bit disappointing, I'm afraid. So anyway, next game should be a lot better, though. Saab and Yurga have proven that they are very powerful players, and Anakin and the Sponge... Well, I know they're powerful individually. See how they work together. I mean, we did see them before as well, and they do know how to handle the late game, how to handle macro, and how to handle economy. The Sponge definitely knows how to handle raiding. We'll see, though. Saab and Yurga, they are... They are also fairly powerful in those regards. I mean, they're, they're solid players. So I think that it's going to be a fairly interesting semifinals match. And yeah, Ivory King Vestrisium and Banana King Banana Eye is already going on, so we'll catch up to whoever wins that in the finals. Or actually, the bronze match first, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back shortly.